Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we'd look at the partnership and specifically withdrawal of a partner. And this is part four or five. This topic is covered in advanced accounting. It's also covered on the CPA exam, the FAR section. Now, I would like to remind you always, I would like to connect with my viewers. So if you have a LinkedIn account, by all means, please connect with me on my LinkedIn account. If you're a Facebook, if you're a Facebook user, I have a Facebook page, Farhat Lectures. <clears throat> And obviously, I want you to definitely connect with me on YouTube because this is all where I house all my lectures and you'll be not notified once I add a new one and I do have a Twitter account. So let's go ahead and get started with a withdrawal of a partner. And what is a withdrawal of a partner? Basically, one of the partners decided to leave. We could have three partners, one leaves, we could have four, two, whatever. When someone leaves, we need to know how to account for the transaction. Well, if there are two and one left, basically the partnership is is gone but we'll look at various examples okay so a partner cannot be prevented from withdrawing from a partnership so remember the partnership is a voluntary association so a partner can withdraw okay it is assumed that partners mutually agree to withdrawals such that withdrawing partners sell their interest to an outside party so what you can do is this the first option you can sell your interest to an outside party and this could be agreed upon when when you start the partnership where if you decided to leave you can sell your your share to an outside party or withdrawing partners sell their interest to the remaining partners or what you do rather than going to the outside we might say you can only go to the inside it's all depends when they agree upon but i'm just telling you the different scenarios or Partner transfer partnership as a partners transfer partnership asset to to the withdraw to the withdrawing partner. Basically, we'll give you uh, money. We cash you out, and you'll get out. Okay, so that's basically how it works. So let's look at an example, or let's talk about when the payment to retiring partner is in excess of their book value. Simply put, the partner has a one hundred thousand dollar balance, and we're going to give them one hundred and twenty thousand dollar balance. So we're going to pay them in excess of their book value. Book value means in excess of what they have in capital account on the books. So again, we're gonna have the two methods that we talked about earlier for admitting a partner, which is the bonus method and the goodwill method. So what, basically, what is the bonus method? Okay, the remaining partners in this situation are charged with the amount that exceeds the book value of the retiring. So basically, under, under those circumstances, the remaining partners, okay, are char are charged with the amount of the payment. So in case we paid, as I said, we paid $20,000 more, guess what? The remaining partner will have to absorb this loss. Basically, it's a loss for them in a sense. If the goodwill method is used, the existing partner will not agree to reduce their capital balance. Then what's going to happen? The partnership agreement specify how withdrawal is recorded or partners agree that intangible should be recognized. So again, we have more than one option depending on when they, on what they agreed upon. So they may reduce it. They may not reduce it. We'll see how it works. And the best way to illustrate this again is to work an example. So basically what we have right now is uh, K, we have Cosma, we have three partners. And the way I like to work with partners is just basically keep track of their balances. We have K, we have F, and we have T. We have those three par partners, our partners with capital account as 30,000 to K, 75 to F, and T is 45,000. Income and losses are to be divided for four and two, which is which is if you are giving ratios like this, four, four, and two, always add up the ratio four plus four plus two equal to 10. It means this individual gets four tenths, which is 40%, 40%, and this individual gets two tenths, which is 20%. Okay, now let's assume we have three individuals and one left. Okay, two left. What we have left is 4 and 4. 4 plus 4 equal to 8. Then we distribute everything 4, 8 and 4, 8, which is 50% to A and 50% to B, if we have A and B. Okay? I just want, I want to make sure you are comfortable with ratios because on the exam, on the CP exam, they may give you ratios. Okay. 
Now, when Tuck decided to withdraw, the partnership revaluated the asset from 225 to 252, which represented an increase in the value of inventory of 8,000, an increase in the value of land of 19,000. So, T decided, Tucker decided to leave. So, the, the partnership did what? They re revalued their assets. Basically, revalue means mark them to market value to see if there's any increases in the value of the asset. And what they find out is their value, the, the, uh, the asset were valued from 225 up to 252. Okay, so there was an increase, uh, an increase of the inventory and an increase of the uh, land. So what does that mean? It means before T withdrew, we have to revalue the company we have to revalue the asset what does that mean it means we have technically to book again so basically we have to debit the inventory because the inventory was increased we have to debit inventory for eight thousand credit the debit land increase the land account by nineteen thousand and simply put what we are saying we have a twenty five thousand dollar increase in the value of the company now that increase will have to be split 40 40 and 20. So K is going to get 40% of this. K is going to get 10,800, which is 40% of 27,000. F will get also 40%, 10,800. And T is going to get 20% out of this, which is 5,400. Now, once you do this, once this is K capital, F capital, and T capital once you once you do this increase their balances basically come up here and add 10,800 10,800 and 5,400 the balance now is 50,400 the balance here is 85,800 and the balance here is 40,800 so after this transaction this becomes their balances this becomes their balances and we'll come back to this point because we do need this point okay all right um prepare the journal entry to record the revaluation i just did you debit the assets to increase them and you allocate the increase to the various uh to the various partners the next thing you do is we're going to record the withdrawal of t Tucker was then given $15,000 cash and the note for $40,000 for his withdrawal from the partnership. So simply put, what's going to happen is um, we're going to give Tucker $15,000 in cash and the note for $40,000. What does that mean, a note for $40,000? It's basically we are forgiving some of the debt that he is responsible for. Okay? So basically what we gave Tucker is 15 plus we withdrew it basically we, we eliminated his debt 40 so we gave Tucker fifth we're giving Tucker in total 55,000 we're giving Tucker 55,000 we're giving Tucker 55,000 now let me go back let me go back here to one note look Tucker's account is only 50,000 so we're giving Tucker 55,000, but his account only is 50,400. So how do we input this entry? First, we have to remove Tucker's account. So Tucker capital will have to be debited 50,400. So we need to remove his account. We debit his account. We credit cash 15,000. We credit notes payable, basically, Kind of we, we we removed his note for forty thousand. Now we're responsible for it. Basically, we added it to the books. Okay, we're responsible for it. Then what's going to happen? The difference, which is four thousand six hundred, the difference between those two is four thousand six hundred. Who's going to absorb this? If we're using the bonus method, K Capital, Cosma Capital would absorb four thousand six hundred, and full care capital will absorb the other 4600 so what we did is we um is we gave him 55000 for his balance of 50400 using the bonus method it means the other partners will absorb the losses so let me show you the journal entry of how this works okay this is a journal entry we gave him 55000 his balance is 50400 therefore 
we, the other two partners, absorb the 4,600. Okay? The next thing we're going to look at is the goodwill method, and we have two goodwill method. One is the partial method, and one is the full method. So I'm going to first show you the partial method, then we'll look at the full method. Okay? Under the partial method, here's what's going to happen. The goodwill is worth 4,600. I showed you how we computed the goodwill. Basically, the difference between what we're giving him and what we're giving him and what what we're giving him and what his balance is worth, it means there's a goodwill for the company of 4,600. So what we do is we record the goodwill as 4,600 and we update Tucker's account. So what we do is we update Tucker's account. Now Tucker's account, remember it was 50,400 and what we do, we'll take the goodwill and we give it all to Tucker. Now Tucker's account is 55,000. Okay, so that's what we do with the partial goodwill. Then what we do is we remove Tucker's account. It was 45 the beginning, so th that was his beginning balance. Then this 5400 for the evaluation, and this 4400 coming from the goodwill. So we debit his account 55,000, credit cash 50, 15,000, and credit notes payable 15,000. Under the partial method, the other partners not affected. The other partners were not affected under the partial method. Let's take a look under the full goodwill method. Under the full goodwill method, remember we have 4,600, what we find out, we have 4,600 of goodwill, basically. And what's gonna happen, 4,600, we're gonna assume this goodwill applies to all, okay? So simply put, if if Tucker only is worth 4,600, 20% of 4,600, guess what? This has, it means the goodwill and the hope for the whole partnership is 23,000 because if the, if the 4,600 belongs to Tucker, we're, we're giving him 4,600 more, which is what's, and he's 20% owner, it means the other partners, they have double that value. So if we're giving him more, we're going to have to give the other partners more. Okay. So under the full, full goodwill method, what we do is we say, well, Tucker's, goodwill account is 4,600, but if we are revaluing everything, if this is, if we're going to increase his account by 4,600 and he owns 20%, it means there's 23,000 in total in goodwill. Therefore, the other two partners each will get 9,200 to their capital account. Now, now Tucker will, now Tucker's balance is 55,000, then we we'll remove his balance. We debit Tucker's balance 55, Credit cash, credit notes payable. Simply put, in the full goodwill method, we said the goodwill that Tucker is going to get should also be applied to the other two partners. Okay, that's ba that ba that's basically what we're saying. If he's getting 4,600, then the company must be worth more, 20% more, which is worth 23,000 more based on the goodwill of 4,600. Therefore, the 23,000... 4,600 goes to Tucker under the full goodwill method. The other partner absorbed the other goodwill to increase their balances. Now, sometimes what's going to happen is we pay the retiree less than the book value. What's going to happen and under those circumstances, the partner may agree to accept less than their interest and could be many reasons. They may not like the company. They think they want to leave early because before, you know, <laughs> before things goes down south. Um, maybe uh, may need operating capital for personal reasons because, because they want the money now and said, okay, we can give you the money, but it's going to be less. Um, the business associ association may not be acceptable. Maybe they, this individual is not happy with the partnership and they don't want to be associated with the company anymore. Under those circumstances, the bonus method is justified. Simply put, if your balance is 100000 and and you need to leave, and you need to leave the partnership. Let me go to the last slide. Okay, if your if your if your capital is a hundred thousand, and we're only going to give you eighty thousand, what's going to happen? You are losing twenty thousand. So under those circumstances, the twenty thousand is a bonus to the remaining partners. So the remaining partners will get the twenty thousand dollar bonus depending on their capital, whatever their uh, agreement is, four to two. So if their agreement is, let's assume kind of um, if we have 20,000 and we have an agreement of four to four to five, 
okay four four plus uh and let's assume this individual left four left and there's a bonus of twenty thousand and this is a b and c so four four and five and b left four left what's left is four and five therefore four plus five equal to nine now what's going to happen the twenty thousand will be distributed four ninth and five ninth so this is how we distribute the remaining in case the in case the uh, bonus going to the existing partners um, if you have any questions any comments by all means email me if you're studying hard for your cpa if you're studying study hard for your cpa exam if you happen to visit my website for additional lectures please do so and if you do so please consider donating um, donating money thank you very much and good luck